Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to the second episode of PCTV Homecast. We are very excited to be able to work together and bring you news while we are out of school and away from the Career Center. Thank you for tuning in. I'm Maya Vickery, and this is PCTV Homecast. Starting with the update on the number of coronavirus cases in Porter County, 217 positive, positive cases have been reported, 15 people hospitalized, and six deaths. 87 cases have recovered. Our very own reporter, Kenzie Klein, has more about a possible treatment or cure on coronavirus. Over to you, Kenzie. Thanks, Maya. With more than 873,000 confirmed cases of COVID-19, the U.S. is in desperate need of help. In a recent White House Coronavirus Task Force briefing, President Trump suggested that using light and heat could be an interesting experiment to help find a potential cure for the virus. President Trump's remarks were in response to a presentation from William Bryan, the Undersecretary for Science and Te Technology at the Department of Homeland Security. In the presentation, a study showed that the virus deteriorates more quickly when subjected to higher temperatures and humidity. Even though outbreaks have occurred in a number of warm climates like Singapore and Brazil, hopefully some form of treatment or cure will be found and available to those suffering from COVID-19 as soon as possible. While possible cures for coronavirus are being tested, the virus is still taking the lives of loved ones in the community. Former Valparaiso basketball star and Purdue guard Brandon Newman mourns the death of his dad due to COVID-19. Ronald Newman, father of the former Viking star, was one of the most decorated officers in the Chicago Police Department and earned 137 departmental awards throughout his nearly 20 years of service on Chicago's South Side. Our deepest condolences are now with the Newman family and their loss. Back to you, Maya. Thank you, Kenzie. And now let's hear from Katherine Davis discussing the recent closure of State Road 2. Good evening. I'm Katherine Davis, and I'm here on County Road 100 West. Behind me, we have State Road 2, where construction workers have started working on a new roundabout, as well as completing other intersections. This construction won't be done until the end of August, so be sure to avoid these places, and it'll be between US 231 and US 30. Back to you guys in the studio. COVID-19 has been the main topic of every discussion lately. How about we turn it over to Sydney Hoosier for a break from coronavirus. Sid? Thanks, Maya. At approximately 5 a.m. on April 29th, an asteroid about 1.2 miles wide is expected to pass by Earth. Thankfully, it's doing its flyby 4 million miles away, so it won't collide with our planet. Experts at Arecibo Observatory have been monitoring this near-Earth asteroid, among others, since the mid-90s. The scientists are recording and observing the precise orbits of potentially hazardous objects on behalf of planetary defense. A new fund to support school meal programs during this pandemic is being established by the Indiana Toll Road Concession Company. They will fund a $100,000 grant to help contribute counteract the cost for school food programs in seven northern Indiana counties. Superintendents of these counties will be emailed at an application to help fund existing programs or start one. Their program will serve meals to the students on weekends and specifically support the backpacks and snacks food programs. Thanks to you. Thank you, Sydney. Kevin Reynolds is here today to give us an update on our upcoming weather. Kevin, how does it look out there? Thanks, Maya. We had a very cloudy day today with temperatures of 58 in the morning and 44 in the afternoon. Now get ready because we're expecting a whole lot of rain later in the evening. Tomorrow is also going to be cloudy with a high of 52, a low of 39, and some rain in the afternoon. Sunday will be sunny with some cloud cover throughout the day, a high of 52, and a low of 35. Monday will also be sunny with some cloud cover, a high of 63 and a low of 49. Tuesday will be completely cloudy with possible thunderstorms and a 40% chance of rain, but things are gonna get a little warmer with a high of 66 and a low of 51. Wednesday is gonna be cloudy with a 50% chance of rain, a high of 58 and a low of 43. Thursday, we will once again have some sunshine, a high of 56 and a low of 41, but 
a possible chance of rain. I'm Kevin Reynolds, PCTV Weather. Back to you, Maya. Thanks, Kevin. Logan Ostick will now update us on what is currently happening in the world of sports. This is Logan Ostick, and this is PCTV Sports. Yes, I have actual sports to talk about today, because the NFL Draft's first round was yesterday, despite the coronavirus. League Commissioner Roger Goodell announced picks live from his man cave at home. Rounds 2 and 3 of the draft are tonight on ABC, ESPN, and online at 6 p.m. In League of Legends news, Riot Games have canceled the mid-season t- Invitational Tournament due to the pandemic. The tournament could not have been done in person, and doing it remotely would have been an issue due to internet latency, as it is an international tournament. This is also allowing the national leagues to continue their summer splits on time. Hackers have leaked the source code of Team Fortress 2 and Counter-Strike Global Offensive onto the internet, sparking fears about security vulnerabilities in the game. Valve has assured Counter-Strike players that they are safe, but it is unknown if Team Fortress 2 players are still vulnerable or not. Security experts are recommending to stay away from Team Fortress 2 until Valve confirms it is safe. Well, that's all the time I have. I'm Logan Ostick, and this has been PCTV Sports. While staying home right now is necessary and may be a refreshing break, many people are struggling with staying active and refraining from going stir-crazy. Sanders is bringing us ideas on how to remain safe but outside of the house. During these unfortunate times, it can be hard for some people to get outdoors. However, fishing is a great way to get fresh air and exercise. As long as you're practicing social distancing, it's a great way to spend time with your family. It's also not that complicated to figure out. All you need are some poles, bait, and some type of water, whether it's a pond, a lake, or even a river. As the water starts warming up during these summer months, these fish will start to be moving from deeper water to shallower water looking for food to eat. This will make it a lot easier for you guys to catch the fish. If you're interested in watching more videos about fishing, you could go to my YouTube channel, Indiana Excitement, where I go around Indiana and fish while giving tips and tricks. As long as you're being safe, fishing is a great way to get outside and enjoy the weather during these tough times. And now over to Katie Weber as she shows us various ways to stay busy during self-isolation. I know just how hard staying busy is during this quarantine. There are times where I'm so bored that it's unbearable but I've given some of these activities a try and it really helps smooth things along. So maybe give it a shot. Go on a bike ride with your family. Try completing a puzzle. Go through your closet and have a fashion show. Try out different hairstyles. Try cooking or baking something. Play a video game with your friends. Maybe do your e-learning. Take up yoga or exercising. Or you can try decorating your house with hearts to show your support to the essential workers. Hopefully one or more of these activities have piqued your interest. And there are many more activities than just the ones I have listed, so maybe give one of them a shot. Remember, we're almost through to the end. Don't give up hope just yet. Let's end this episode off on a good note, with Kate Bagnell reporting on some good news. Good afternoon. I'm Kate with PST TV, and I'm here with your good news. In Portage, Aylesworth Elementary, teachers and staff are trying to bring encouragement to homebound students. Aylesworth Principal Taylor states that teachers have been keeping up with their students through videos, phone calls, and emails. Over the last few weeks, the teachers planned for between 40 to 50 staff members to attend and drive up and down the streets of Portage near Aylesworth Elementary to encourage their students to continue doing their best. Our next piece of good news comes from the Northwest Indiana Times. It seems Northwest Indiana communities are rallying around 2020 senior students graduating from home. As many communities come together to support their seniors, Hebron High School is jumping on board as well by assigning volunteers with home addresses and lawn signs to be placed in the lawn of every Hebron senior to show their love and support. Like many across the region, Hebron is also featuring students in 60 Seconds with a Senior on social media posts to recognize all their hard work, achievements, and their future plans. As a 2020 senior myself, I received my senior yard sign 
this morning, which was a nice gesture from my school to show their love and support. Now, back to you, Maya. That's awesome, Kate. I know everyone is thinking of seniors during this. That's all for this episode of PCTV Homecast. Thank you for joining us today, and don't forget to come back next Friday, May 1st at 5 p.m. for our next episode. I'm Maya Vickery. Have a good night.